Let's talk about the 12 different ways you can trigger the condition called autophagy. So the word autophagy means self-eat because your cells are basically eating up and recycling damaged proteins and malfunctioning organelles or pieces of the cell that are no longer working. Now, a lot of benefits can occur from autophagy. One is anti-aging. Uh, number two is dropping inflammation. Number three is improving your immune system because part of the recycling process involves cleaning up pathogens, microbes, candida, parasites, and even viruses. But I believe that the biggest benefit of autophagy is decreasing the risk of cancer. Because if you think about it, cancer can't actually exist unless there's first damage to the mitochondria. So if you're going through autophagy and you're cleaning up all the damage in your mitochondria, you basically bring your risk for cancer way down. So there are several things that can trigger autophagy that go beyond just fasting. Number one, regular exercise. And the key word is regular, not like a one-time thing. You do periodic exercise. It's regular, consistent exercise. Not only will it trigger autophagy, but it'll increase the capacity of autophagy. So you're just going to uh, clean up more damage in the body. So the research on exercise includes both resistant training and aerobic type exercise. Aerobic exercise really improves autophagy of the brain. And I'm going to put all the references down below so you can check them out. Number two, intermittent fasting. You, this is the one that most people know about. And you'd have to fast for at least 18 hours um, to really see the benefits of autophagy. And if you go up to 48 hours, you're going to see more and more benefits. You're basically recycling all the little damaged uh, proteins or cellular machinery in the side of the cells that basically are not helping you, they're hurting you. All right, number three, ketones. So ketones can trigger autophagy. They also protect the neurons. They feed the neurons. They can actually stimulate autophagy in the brain, clean out some of this amyloid placking that's involved in dementia. All right, number four, sleep. This is when you recover. Autophagy occurs when you're in recovery mode. This is why stress blocks autophagy, but sleep can enhance autophagy. Then we get hyperbaric oxygen therapy has the capacity of stimulating autophagy. Cold and hot therapy, because it triggers certain genes that stimulate that mechanism. Okay, number seven, coffee. I'm not talking about drinking pots of coffee because you're gonna to get too much caffeine, but it's the polyphenols that can stimulate some autophagy. And then wine, which by the way, I'm not recommending, but it does tend to stimulate autophagy, but it has other effects that could be damaging to the liver. All right, number nine, cruciferous vegetables. Specifically, the phytochemical called sulforaphane can trigger autophagy. Green tea stimulates a certain phytonutrient that can also increase autophagy. Extra virgin olive oil has a phytochemical that has the ability to stimulate autophagy in human studies. Some of these other ones are in animal studies. Number 12, mushrooms. Sitake and oyster mushrooms stimulate this chemical, which has a capacity to increase autophagy. So if you combine all of these, let's say, for example, you drink a lot of wine at night, okay? You're going to get drunk, go to sleep. You're going to sleep a lot deeper initially anyway, but of course you're going to wake up with a hangover, so you're going to need more coffee. Then you can go and make yourself some breakfast with mushrooms, uh, fried in olive oil, maybe put a little cruciferous vegetables, drink your green tea, and then go for your daily exercise, and then start your intermittent fasting. And realize that was a joke. You don't want to combine them together. But if you have not seen some of my other videos on autophagy, check them out. They're on the screen now.